I'm taking four artworks that were sent to me by the community and I'm going to be fixing them, hopefully showing how small changes can make a big impact to the final image, starting with image number one. The first thing I would change for this is the camera angle, because although unique, we're so far removed from it that we almost feel divorced, like we're like looking at specimens through a glass. So drop the camera to a more human eye level and it immediately feels more relatable. Now we have the problem of hierarchy because we've got a water tank, trees, a car, grass, and a house, and they're all vying for our attention. It's not clear what we're supposed to be looking at or what is the most important thing because they all have equal weight almost, right? So you can change that very quickly just by moving the camera closer so that the house is the biggest and clearest thing that we should be looking at. Next, I would improve the lighting. We've got noon lighting at the moment, which is quite unflattering. It tends to make things look very flat. So the trick that all photographers and cinematographers have been using for decades is to just use the golden hour, which is to drop the sun right to that final hour before it goes under the horizon and you get longer shadows, you get softer light, warmer light, and it just feels a lot more dramatic. But now we need to talk about those trees. <laughs> There's really no value in creating your own trees unless you want to become a vegetation artist. When you join a production, they're always just going to be using an asset library, generally speaking. So you as an artist shouldn't be creating your own trees. You should be using good, high quality assets. There are a number of asset libraries out there where you can find trees. Just go find some good ones and then buy it. If you're sticking to just free libraries, you will tend to get what you pay for. So often you do need to pay for it, but it's really going to improve your portfolio because because although you didn't make the trees, it shows and it signals to an employer that you have good taste and that's important. All right, so now some technical problems with the ground. We've got like some weird artifacting in the mud and also these plants look far too big. So I would just drop the height and just clear out the mud, just make it a little cleaner. Now the story. So you have to say something with your, with your scene. It has to be very clear what it is you're saying. And I think you're halfway there. You've got like this derelict kind of scene, like what, what would really be appealing? What is something that we could say about this? And I think that is a forgotten life. That is your story. It's something that there once was life here. This was somebody's place of residence and now it is forgotten. And to do that, I think we need to add in basically more elements to show that it has been forgotten, right? So look at reference photos of places like Detroit or places that have been abandoned and derelict and you'll see lots of trash, lots of breakage, um, graffiti, and generally something to show people don't live here anymore, they once did. Now, a couple of minor tweaks, I think there's still too much attention going on this car on the left-hand side, so I'll drop that, move it back a little bit. I'll also just add some shadow to the lower half of those trees on the left here, just try and move some of the attention back to the house. And then finally, a little trick, if you put trees off frame so that it's just casting light across the scene, it signals that the scene is wider and those shadows create really interesting shapes there. And so that's basically it. It's not perfect. There's maybe a few more things I would tweak, maybe add some mist or something like that, but generally it is a lot nicer. So that's the before, that's the after, and uh, that's how I would fix this render. This is a new video format, by the way. So if you like it, please hit like and subscribe so that I know to keep making more of them. All right, next up, we've got some Archviz, which is a doozy of a category because it looks deceptively easy, but then you quickly realize it's less about 3D and more about interior design and sourcing good assets. So I'm not an interior designer, but I do know a little bit about it. I had an Architecture Academy course back in the day and I'm very focused on it now at Polygon. The first thing I noticed looking at this is that your windows, the design of your windows say apartment and yet the exterior says residential. So one of those has to change. I think in this case, Let's just make it an apartment by changing the exterior to a city shot. All right, the lighting's changed. Now it feels a little too dark and moody, not good for something inviting. So let's just brighten up the exposure. And now the next thing I'm not really a fan of is this bookshelf on the left-hand side. It's okay, but it's not really adding anything to the shot. And it's also kind of boxing in the viewer. So I would just remove it entirely. And then I would also move the camera a couple of steps to the right, just again, so we're not feeling too boxed in and we're sort of looking at more of the whole space, not just like dead on straight through through the window. So it's feeling more open, but still a little too cramped. And since this is now an apartment, we could raise the ceiling and make it a loft. A higher ceiling not only opens up the space, but it also signifies wealth, since the loft is often one of the most expensive units in an apartment. 
The next thing I would change is the materials. Materials are really important to the design and aesthetic of a space. And I feel like this wooden floor is a little generic. I know it's from Polygon, but I would swap it out with a different material from Polygon, which is a nice concrete polished floor. I would also change the walls to be a concrete plate. And then although it doesn't really make sense for brick to be used in a building this high, um, I think it looks quite nice. So I'm gonna keep it, but I'm actually gonna make it a more grungy, uh, reclaimed looking brick. Now, having a rusty pipe along the ceiling there is a bold choice. I have actually seen that actually in a couple of apartments as a kind of a showpiece of what the place used to be. Um, but it it's a little, I don't know, it needs more texturing, it needs more work. And we could actually replace it with something a lot more practical, which is an HVAC system, which gives it still that same raw exposed look, but it feels a little more appropriate for a loft. Next thing I would change is that window. Um, looking at reference of real lofts from say New York, it's not just like 30 grid little squares. They've got like vertical beams and like bits that can tilt and open and things. So I would just change it to one like this. All right, now finally we can talk about furniture. Like anything in 3D, the assets you choose can either work for you or it can work against you. And this sofa, I don't think is working for you. It feels very, very heavy, especially driven by these armrests here, just this big blocky high armrest. It's occupying a lot of visual space. It does feel a little cheap and like, yeah, just a cheap looking sofa. So instead I would swap it with a low backed leather sofa. It feels a lot lighter because it's got space underneath the sofa. And also that leather material is adding to this wealthy loft looking apartment. And I feel it's a lot more appropriate. And again, that comes from picking better assets. Don't just pick the cheapest one, pick the one which will actually work well for your scene. Next, I would swap the blinds over the window for some tall pleated curtains, which immediately makes the scene feel more luxurious and welcoming. So the scene feels good, but it feels a little empty as well. We've got this whole area at the top here where there's nothing really going on. And this is why interior designers love pendant lighting. You can have something dangling in the middle there and it is both functional and it can act like jewelry and tell something about the owner of the house or about the scene. And you can change the look of a space drastically by choosing different pendant lights. I like the look of this one, very industrial. However, it did feel too heavy. So instead I went with this one, which is totally different, not really something I would normally choose, but it's very lightweight and it's still got that wiry industrial feel whilst having like, I don't know, this kind of like jewelry look to the lights at the bottom there, which kind of like. And while we're at it, I would also change that little wall sconce lamp on the side there to something a little more interesting and industrial looking. Now we could leave it here, but in my opinion, it is looking a little cold. I think that floor especially is just, it just feels too cold. So I would drop a rug underneath it. This is a little generic looking for my taste, but it's okay, so we'll keep it. I would also straighten up those books on the coffee table and just add in some nice ceramic objects. It's something that all wealthy houses have lots and lots of little knickknacks and ceramic bowls and things. And the place feels really good, does feel nice, but there's just one final thing that I think could improve it. And that's just something to block this big window in the background there that could also add warmth. And that is of course, plants. These are some of the new plants that we've been working on at Polygon and along with some of the ceramic decorations and other things. So you can go to Polygon or click the link in the description if you wanna get those models. But that is how I would fix this render. That's the before, that's the after, and this is them side by side. All right, next up, we have this image by an artist who wanted to capture the feeling of a relaxing lake in the forest. And my biggest issue with this is that's not how forests look. <laughs> Trees with this like sparsing, that's really only found for like manicured landscaped houses. So you should be looking at reference photos, always reference, reference, reference. And when you do that, you'll see that in a forest, the e ecosystem is very competitive and they're all fighting for sunlight. So any little scrap patch of light, there's gonna be a new plant or weed or something growing there to eat that up. So it is very, very dense. Next, let's change the shape of the lake to look less like a pool and more like a natural natural choppy lagoon. And now that we can see it up close, yes, we can confirm that grass is not doing you any favors. So again, simply choose better assets. It's actually the easiest thing you can do as an artist to improve an image. 
Next, I would change the dimensions of the image. So we've got a little bit more vertical room so we can see the trees and the full lake. The next big issue that you can notice now that we've got this full view is that the noise across this lake here, that, that bump, that little rippling is far too big. Like it almost looks like it's made of like jelly or something. So it needs to be much smaller. And again, you get that by looking at reference. And although there are a lot of reference photos of clean, pristine looking lakes, there's also some with a bunch of gunk across the water. And this is really personal preference, but I tend to think that makes it look more realistic. So you could improve it just by adding in some of this gunk across the floor. Just add in a texture, drop it on top of the plane as a decal, um, and then it will tend to look a lot more interesting. And then really the only thing left is the fun part, which is lighting. So right now the sunlight just feels like a typical holiday snap. There's nothing special about it. It's kind of like, I don't know, 10 a.m. Like, hey, it's 10 a.m. So let's change the light. Let's make it backlit. Get some of that nice reflection across the water. Uh, we've got some like nice light coming through the trees there. You could also add a little bit of mist across the water there. It tends to look a little bit too fantasy. Um, so you might not like that. The before and the after. It's really just a matter of looking at reference, seeing how the real world works, copying that, and then also you as the artist are taking elements from different reference and then saying, I like that, I like that, and then sort of fusing it together into something new. And last but not least, a car render. And this is a good example of, I think, good design. He actually designed this car himself and modeled it, which is very challenging to do. But I think the presentation is letting it down. But thankfully, the presentation is the easy part. So the biggest problem with the presentation is uh, for one, this blurry car in the background there, our eyes tend to be drawn to things that are fast moving. And that sitting right on top of the car is also breaking up the silhouette. So it's just not a good idea. It's very distracting and it just doesn't feel right there. So I think you should just make it purely about that car, the red car, nothing else to distract us, just that. Now. It also feels boring, very static. And if you were just scrolling through your feed, there's nothing interesting about this that would make you want to keep looking at it. So what do a lot of car photographers do? They put the car in motion. Very easy to do. You just parent the camera to the car and then you animate the car going very quickly. And there you go, you've got some motion. Now the angle of this feels a little odd. I know you probably wanted to show the silhouette and the detail of the back of the car, but I do think the front is more interesting though. So I'd move the camera to the front and now we've got a much better understanding of the shape of the car. And now the only thing I'd change is that sad overcast HDR. Swap it for a nice sunny one and we're golden. That's it, that's all you need to change. That's the before, the after, and you can see that it feels a lot easier to read and just generally, in my opinion, is a stronger image. But that's it, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments. And again, if you want to see more of these videos, this is a new video format. Hit like and subscribe so that I know you want me to make more. Thank you for watching.